by Mr. Nevin, who is a partner in United Trade, United Trademark and Patent Service, Dubai. Along with him, we also have Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar, who is the founder and senior IPR attorney of Verdict IP Hyderabad. Sir is also an adjunct faculty at Iqbal Law School, Hyderabad. I also welcome Professor Dr. A. V. Narsimha Rao, sir, who is the director of Iqbal Law School, Hyderabad. Welcome, everyone, sir. Along after this welcome address, now first of all, I would like to request Honorable Director of Iqbal Law School, Hyderabad, Professor A. V. Narsimha Rao, sir, to please give a welcome remark on the topic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Dilip. Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar Garu, Verdict IP, a well known attorney in the area of intellectual property rights and information technology, an adjunct faculty of our high school, and Mr. Navin Koshi, advocate, attorney, and intellectual property specialist from Dubai, partner of the United Patents and Intellectual Property Rights Firm, other faculty members, advocates, attorneys, students, and many other people. We welcome you to this webinar on intellectual property rights. The Equal Law School Giant Group planning to conduct a series of webinars on intellectual property area. Last time we conducted one program with Ramakrishna Dhamodaran of Malaysia. Now we are conducting with Naveen Koshi from Dubai. We are also planning to have few more series with the expert or in the intellectual property from different parts of the globe. And we are looking to complete at least one webinar every week. All this credit goes to Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar, who has taken a lot of initiation in settling these issues. You know that for the last four months, the pandemic has stopped the entire economic activity across the globe, not only in India, but all the places. No place is exempted from its attack. During this period, all businesses closed, all offices closed, courts closed, only virtual courts are working, working upon. But there is a specialty for intellectual property rights offices. From the last few years, maybe five years or a decade, this intellectual property rights has promoted digital environment for the filing applications and filing information and evidences, etc. That has created a benefit during this pandemic. Any application for registration or any document for the purpose of supporting their argument can be filed by using the IT or to the portal of that particular patent or trademark or what other application you are filing with. This is an advantage we have. But there is a cascading effect on intellectual property rights. Once a business closes, people are at their houses, they are not able to find what's the impact of that particular infringement, all those things. There, was, there is no possibility to find out whether any company is in making in, uh, inventions or any anyone any business house is coming with the specialized products or tech, uh, uh, trademarks etc etc so because of this gap in between the theory and practice and practice at uh, society level or business level has created a lot of challenges now we have seen last time there is a lot of decrease in the filing of the applications because of the pandemic in various countries including india now we have to have find out what's the position in dubai what's the position in other countries whether the filing of the applications increased or not way to find out. So this session, having Mr. Nevin Kosi, he will be giving a picture of the particular present position of trademarks in Dubai and its nearby countries. And Mr. Ashok Ram Kumar is going to talk something about the intellectual property right, different status as of now today. And he'll be giving a little picture of our Indian, Indian, Indian picture also. So, once again, I welcome all of you to this webinar and I request Ram Kumar to take the next activity and address the gathering. Thank you very much for coming.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Narasimha Rao Garu, for uh, that uh, introduction. Uh, as Mr. Narasimha Rao said, we are proposing to conduct similar such, uh, you know, webinars, mostly to know what other countries are doing in filing their, in, in getting their applications filed and uh, prosecuted and all. Obviously, we can learn quite a lot uh, from knowing from other lawyers like Mr. Nevin Koshi. Last time we had a, uh, you know, talk with Mr. Uh, uh, Ramakrishna Damodaran. He was also giving a situation that is prevailing in Malaysia. Well, one thing that seems to be common is all countries are affected by COVID. The I know Mr. Narasimha Rao may not like this, but I generally prefer to call it as a Chinese virus, a COVID virus that has been today, which is declared as a pandemic. Many efforts have been made by this country to see, to bring back the country on the regular, you know, day-to-day uh, -day, uh, affairs, but still, you know, we are facing a lot of problems. And many businesses have, have closed, SMEs, many of them have shut down. There was a lot of huge migration of workers, thereby, you know, that affecting construction work, that affecting so many works and all that. Even lawyers and litigants have not been spared by this uh, pandemic. Initially, there was quite some confusion as to how we are going to do. But I'm glad that uh, you know, the judicial system was quick to adopt to the technology. And then they started, they said, nothing doing, we are going to start hearing cases. And all the cases that are going to be heard are urgent matters, not the regular one. So at least something is moving in the judicial background. And uh, there have been enthusiastic, uh, you know, participations by the lawyers, judges, uh, the concerned, the clerical staff, the, uh, you know, filing system, everything had been contributing its might to see that the wheels, the judiciary wheels roll. Because according to me, today it is only the judiciary that seems to be functioning in this country or the state. The governments have completely, uh, I think they have vanished. They are, they are not to be seen anywhere. But, <clears throat> One concern that always was there is how do you balance the interest of the litigants as well as at the same time adopt a very safe method of operating that is without getting crowded in a court and at the same time seeing that certain urgent matters are dealt with. There was this introduction of virtual courts. Virtual courts is not uh, new uh, to us, at least for the intellectual property right lawyers, because we got used to filing online applications with the registries, then having virtual hearings with the patent, uh, controller of patent, registrar of trademarks, and things like that. So it was not new for us. But for some lawyers, it was basically a new thing. And they had to, you know, they had no other uh, choice, you know, except to adopt this, at least for the purpose of surviving this pan pandemic and doing some sort of a, you know, service or justice to their clients. Then the court started coming out with virtual courts. Now, everything is streamlined as far as Telangana High Court is concerned. Even the lower courts have adopted a similar way. In fact, uh, we file quite a lot of payment uh, applications and civil suits in the lower courts through the, uh, you know, filing, e-filing system, uh, rather through the, there's no specific e-filing system that can be compared with the intellectual property office, but some sort of a basic infrastructure has been developed. I'm sure that they are going to fine tune this further. But how far can you, you know, have this virtual court for a continued, you know, addressing of legal 
you know, addressing of petitions and writ petitions has to be seen. But according to me, it is only the initial admission stage that this might work. But for you know, uh, you know, when it comes to evidences or in second appeals and things like that, I think it's a final hearing also. I think it is going to be a bit difficult. Uh, I hope that uh, in another three, four months, this pandemic comes down and uh, we all have a come back to normal. The second issue that was always, you know, troubling lawyers like me was the, uh, what is called as a limitation that was generally associated with filing of uh, applications. So you file a trademark application, you get a, FPR for it, you are supposed to answer it within 30 days. Similarly, filing of evidences in opposition, you know, opposition notices, uh, then reply to opposition notice, evidence, rule 45 evidence, rule 46 evidence, rule 47 evidence. All these are time bound. See, under IP law, since the officials who are quasi judicial authorities are creation of the law, like registrar of trademarks or the controller of patent. They are not creation of the law. So the question of their extending a limitation has been struck down by the Supreme Court in at least two to three cases. Today, the law that is prevailing is that you cannot extend timing that has been prescribed under the law. That is, if you for a for a for a filing of a opposition, if it is four months, if the person does not file an opposition within four months, he can't file an extension of time and then file. So that, that cannot be done. So this issue initially was a matter of concern. Then there was a writ petition that was filed in Delhi, uh, you know, on 11 5 2020, writ petition number 3059 of 2020, which was filed by the Intellectual Property Attorneys Association. And then they craved the leave of the Delhi High Court saying, look, limitation is something that we are really worried about. And if limitation hits, our applications might get abandoned. And that is going to be a very tough time for us. So the Delhi High Court immediately passed an order on 11-5. And, you know, extending the limitation period from 15-3, 15th of March, to, to a, until further orders was what was given. Then later, this matter was also escalate. You know, it went to the rather the Supreme Court took it up as a Suomoto uh, case, and then they said that under Section 140, uh, Article 141, 142 of the Constitution, the uh, Supreme Court passed an order saying we are going to extend the limitation in all legal proceedings irrespective of the limitation prescribed under the general law or the special law, whether condonable or not, with effect from 15-3-2020 until further orders. So no further orders have come. So that was a great relief to many of us lawyers, you know, who are very getting concerned with the, uh, you know, um, uh, limitation period. But otherwise, the Intellectual property registries in India had been uh, taking applications. There was no difficulty in refiling applications. In fact, last two to three months, I filed more than 80 to 90 trademark applications without any problems. Then we filed copyright applications. I also filed few patent applications without any problem. And I have also been receiving FARs and I have been replying to the FARs. Now the question is, how are the hearings going to happen? I think that will take some time. But at the same, but when the hearings do come about, I think uh, they are going to be a lump sum. You know, at a time, each lawyer's applications, about 40, 50 will be posted and then it will be heard. Or they may change the situation and say, look, though you have sought for a physical hearing in your examination report submission, we will have to convert it into a virtual hearing because of this pandemic and all. Yes, that can be done. There is absolutely no difficulty. This webinar now, you know, we thought we will talk about what is happening in other countries because many of us know what is happening. In so what is it that other countries are doing? Last time when Ramakrishna Damodaran, after his, during his talk, I found that 
there is nothing different that we are doing from what Malaysia is doing. And we are we are all on the same par. I won't say we are doing better than Malaysia. Malaysia is doing better than us. But uh, lines to know that uh, you know uh, the uh, situation given uh, under the given situation. I think both the countries have been doing great. Now to know what is happening in Dubai. I have a very close friend, a smart gentleman, Mr. Nevin uh, Koshi, Nevin Jacob Koshi, who is unmute, unmute. Sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Nevin Koshi, who is uh, with the United Trademark and Patent Services in Dubai. Like uh, many other friends whom I meet in the international conferences, I also like to meet Nevin in INTA and the APPI. And it is always great to meet old friends, you know, once in a year, shake hands, pat their shoulders and say how you are and all that. But apart from that, we also work closely. You know, when we file applications for each other in their respective countries, we work very closely. So I thought Nevin was a perfect person to talk about what the situation is in Dubai. Now, he is a person who has completed all his education till date in distinction and high merit, which is which is quite commendable. And he has won more than 10 years professional experience of very high quality. Right? He is a member of the Charter Institute of Patent Attorneys, United Kingdom, and he has worked for a number of reputed biotech industries, both as a research scientist and as an intellectual property consultant. I think both our friends, Mr. Ramakrishna Damodaran as well as Mr. Naveen are, were, are, highly, are highly qualified. In fact, Mr. Naveen seems to have done a lot of work in uh, as a scientist too. So, you know, that, that adds up to your, uh, you know, profile when you are doing patents. Then he has also worked as an IP consultant in technology transfer department of the Queen Mary University of London. A dream that always remained with me because I could, I, though I got the admission, the prohibitive cost did not allow me to join. So that that dream is still unfulfilled. Uh, you know, my joining the uh, Queen Mary's London. Then he is an active member of various international organizations like INTA, AAPPI, APA, CIPA, and the uh, AAPLA. All this. He has got a terrific exposure to, you know, the way how uh, you know uh, matters are taken up in the middle east not just in dubai but also in middle east in various countries so i'll now hand over this with this brief discussion uh, you know the introduction i'll hand over this to mr uh, nevin and uh, please mute all your mics uh, mr nevin has got a terrific voice apart from the smartness he carries around with him so you please listen to him well uh, you will learn a lot. And uh, over to you, Nevin. And welcome, Nevin. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Thank you for the kind introduction also. Uh, we meet quite often uh, in international conferences, but this is the first time that uh, I am doing a, a presentation uh, online. Uh, like this, uh, though I have done it in other forums during the COVID, uh, these kind of platforms are much more interesting and much more productive, I would say. Uh, before I, the moderator, could you just allow me to share the, the presentation? My share content is uh, inactive. Yes, sir. I'm just now making you the presenter. And thank you so much, uh, Narasim Rasa, uh, for taking the initiative. Uh, I know the brainchild uh, who among you who it is, but then uh, you're doing a good job, uh, especially during this uh, COVID uh, situation of how to bring together like-minded people and to have a have a discussion, have the healthy conversation, and uh, as Ashok was telling. How to learn from each other because this is a new situation. 
uh, we do not, uh, we haven't encountered these kind of situations before. So it's a learning process. Every day is a learning process, both for us as well as for each and every garment. Okay. Just let me know if the, the presentation is up and running. Yes, it's uh, yes, I, sorry. Fair enough. Now, as the introduction rightly says, so I am very much an Indian, just to give my background, I'm very much an Indian, a South Indian, but I was born and brought up here in uh, UAE. Uh, so this is my second home. Uh, I did my schooling and everything. So I know the culture, I've seen this country grow uh, especially the culture wise and everything. So as a form, we take care of the Middle East, Africa, Southeast Asia, uh, around 18 jurisdictions uh, in this side of the world. Um, and today what I want to do uh, is to talk a bit about the IP perspective uh, here in the Middle East, just to give an overview, because uh, I'm sure most of the audience would be uh, either not practicing or not aware where exactly uh, are the Middle East countries and what are the countries involved and also probably just to touch base on it and then what are the measures that's being taken uh, during this COVID-19 situation uh, and then uh, post a question or feel free to let me know if there is anything that you want additional information. Now this is the overview, One second, sorry. I'm just uh, minimizing everything. Okay, fine. This is the overview. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Middle East. What is GCC countries and where exactly is UAE? Because many times when I go to these conferences, people have heard about Dubai. People have, must have heard about Abu Dhabi separately or Saudi Arabia. Many times, uh, people get confused with the jurisdiction. Sometimes people ask me, what is the capital of Dubai? Uh, so just to make sure that everyone's on the same uh, uh, page, just talk about Middle East in brief and what are the countries involved in it. Uh, the statistics, uh, the current uh, recoveries, the deaths, uh, the current number of patients, uh, what was the trend, the countermeasures that was taken early on, uh, and what are the, uh, the measures that's being taken uh, uh, currently. Uh, a bit about the IP filing, prosecution and enforcement. I'll just cover the basics because I don't want to be repetitive. Uh, the reason that I'm talking about the IP filing is just to understand uh, and make sure that everyone's aware of the procedures. So, and then I would touch base on the current practices uh, for filing prosecution and enforcement during this period, and a couple of practical tips that uh, you can take home. Talking about the Middle East, now this is where Middle East is. Uh, okay. It's a small jurisdiction, very closely related to Africa. And because of this, and I'm going to talk, and this is the GCC countries like the Saudi, Oman, UAE. Uh, Bahrain, Kuwait, these are the GCC countries. Uh, in total, it's called the Middle East, but among that, there is an association called GCC, uh, six member countries. Um, and this is Africa, obviously. And because of its strategic location, and that's how Middle East has been marketing, because of its strategic location, a lot of import export happens in this jurisdiction. And the countries are in itself trying to attract foreign investments for manufacturing and all. As you would rightly know, uh, early on, it was oil and gas. Uh, now, uh, soon after the, the early recession in 2007-8, countries have started realizing that the oil will run out sooner or later. And that's how they started diversifying the economy early on. Uh, as I said before, these are the six GCC countries. Uh, the reason that I'm just mentioning is there is a separate application for GCC countries also, just like the European system. So that's why I'm just giving you a perspective on uh, 
where exactly these countries are. A couple of innovations that's happening other than the oil and gas sector, a uh, couple of innovations and that are happening in UAE specifically, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, they have their own innovation programs, they have their own research facilities. Uh, I'm just concentrating on UAE so that we can condense uh, uh, the matter. Uh, cloud seeding uh, is one of the technologies that has been developed uh, for country specific, uh, uh, UAE in specific. Uh, and it's done by one of the universities in Abu Dhabi. Uh, as you rightly know, uh, rain or water is something that is most needed in these jurisdictions. Uh, and Cloud seeding is one technology that they're trying to develop so that rain can, rainwater can be harvested uh, throughout the year, so better irrigations and all. Uh, it's been done and it's already continuing. It's early on from November to February or March. This is the time where usually the cloud seeding happens. And depending on the, the cloud structure, uh, the, the seeding happens. You must have already read about the mass mission that happened probably six or five, five or six hours ago. Uh, UAE entered into the uh, the Mars uh, mission. Uh, uh, prior to that, uh, the one of the UAE astronauts were also in the space mission uh, with other astronauts in the International Space Mission. Uh, the reason that I'm seeing is. Traditionally, we all thought, and people are still thinking, oil and gas is the, the only source of revenue. But I just wanted to give these pictures to make you understand that gone are those days, they are only depending on oil. They are diversifying the economy and they are investing in other sectors also. The world's first uh, artificial intelligence university uh, is now going to be started in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, September intake. Uh, they are having applications for masters, PhD grads. I know uh, a couple of uh, the audience would be at least students or professors. These are the areas that you can actually look into collaborating with these universities um, so that you have a, a collaborative research facilities. So I talked about the Middle East, talked about a couple of inventions and innovations that's being focused in these jurisdictions. Now the statistics and the measures, the countermeasures that's being taken uh, during the COVID-19. Now, as of July 19th, this is the rate. I'm just giving about the, the UAE market. Uh, it's been increasing uh, day, in, day in, day out. But I wouldn't even dare to compare these figures with India or any other uh, populated jurisdiction. Uh, UAE by far is a very small uh, population, but they're able to contain it right from early on, obviously lockdown and the regular measures, the regular measures. And that's what these things are, the, the WHO guidelines, the social distancing, the economy was uh, locked down for uh, one to two months, then now they're slowly uh, opening up with all these guidelines, like uh, whatever we know about the mask, the N95 mask and all. The difference that I've found uh, when it comes to India and in this jurisdiction, uh, be it UAE or Saudi Arabia, people follow it. People follow it for two reasons, obviously for their own safety. The other thing is the fact that it is being enforced either through fines, either through imprisonment. I mean, you don't get imprisonment by just not wearing a mask. Anything that is graver than that. Uh, I have seen uh, shops being fined for not maintaining social distancing. I've seen motorists being fined for not wearing a mask or wearing a mask, but it's not properly covered. So those are the enforcement activities that we're happening. And that's where I see a key difference between the countries, uh, at least from, from my perspective. Um, obviously, uh, there are uh, uh, cabins available for sanitization. So every government entities and every malls have this facility. So you go through it and then you get sanitized and then you enter the malls or the facilities. 
Uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it. Uh, UAE is also doing its part on the clinical trial for COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, so Abu Dhabi began the, the first, uh, it's been listed by WHO. It's been uh, monitored by the WHO. So uh, just like any other country, UAE also is in that, I wouldn't call it race, at least find uh, a suitable medicine or vaccine uh, to curb uh, the spread. Uh, they're also into stem cells uh, 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 research and uh, it's been uh, ID tested on patients and improvements are there. Uh, results obviously are too early to be published or anything of that sort. But again, these are things that I just want to show that things are going in the right direction uh, and we are only hopeful that uh, a positive result would come uh, sooner, than, uh, sooner than later. So those are the measures, those are the statistics that I've talked about. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the IP filing, prosecution and enforcement that's happening in the side of the world. Uh, I will be talking mostly about the GCC countries, if you remember the six countries, uh, UAE, and more or less, you can correlate the same procedure for other jurisdictions also. And as I said before, one of the reasons that I'm mentioning it is, it is, although it is an international treaty, although it is an international filing system, there are certain, obviously there are certain uh, differences. Uh, and by knowing these basics, you will understand how we are coping up with the current uh, COVID-19 situation. Now, GCC Patent uh, Office, just to introduce, that's typically like the European system, a single filing, one patent application covering all the six member countries. But the same is not available for trademark, so this is only for patent uh, filings. Uh, it is uh, a part of the, all the six member countries are part of the PCT application. So you could either file a PCT application and then enter uh, the national phases. What can be patented, what cannot be patented, not again going into the details, these are basics, but the only difference is it should be compliant with the Sharia law as this is a Muslim country. Uh, anything that is against the Sharia law uh, will not be, even if you satisfy all the three criteria, if it's against Sharia law, uh, it would be rejected. Same for trademark uh, for that matter you will not be able to register a uh, trademark in alcohol uh, uh, products, uh, alcohol classes, uh, basically because uh, it is against the Sharia law. Once you have decided to file, there are a couple of things that you need to understand. Unlike in India or other jurisdictions, it's not like a simply signed document that you can file. These things needs to be legalized. And one of the costly uh, affair in filing in these jurisdictions is to take into consideration these uh, uh, factors. Uh, legalization is expensive and time consuming. And uh, especially during this period, a, a lot of delay is happening uh, for, the, uh, for the legalization of documents. We need the power of attorney, you need the deed of assignment in certain jurisdiction. You need the certificate of incorporation for the applicant. Now, this is mainly to do with the patent, but when it comes to trademark, you would require the power of attorney also legalized. In UAE, you would need the legalized power of attorney at the time of filing. Again, uh, these jurisdictions do not have uh, patent examiners of their own. So they usually collaborate with other patent offices uh, in order to expedite their uh, uh, examination process. Saudi, UAE have their own, uh, Saudi especially have their own uh, examiners. UAE for that matter is uh, having a collaboration with the uh, South Korean patent office. In fact, there are around 30, 30 to 35 uh, uh, examiners in uh, UAE who does the examination. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the scenario for patent, but when it comes to trademark, they have their own examination system, they have their own examiners, and everything is examined in the country of filing itself, unlike uh, patent application. 
A typical flowchart, again, I'm not going into the details of it, but right from filing to grant, these are the process that goes through it. Uh, there is formality examination, there is substantive examination, uh, there is obviously uh, a timeline to respond to the office action. Uh, these timelines and all are rigid. Uh, sometimes, depending on the officials, you can request for extension. And increasingly these days, we are requesting ex uh, requests for uh, submitting responses and all uh, due to the current situation. Uh, although we do not have an aff affirmative answer that yes, it will be uh, uh, accepted, uh, our request for extension will be accepted. We are hopeful because we do not have a, a solid confirmation from any of the authorities that if you miss the deadline, uh, they're still going to accept it. Uh, so all the agents, what they do is they file a memorandum uh, submitting the request for examination or uh, request for responding to an office action. So along with the memo stating the reasons for the extension. Enforcement, uh, not going in detail, but most of the court cases and everything are online these days. Unlike the, the, the Indian judicial system, there is no oral hearing except if it's a criminal case. So most of it is as it is, even prior to COVID, uh, it's the French system, everything is in writing. Uh, you hire an expert uh, for trademark or patent related uh, issues. The expert will give the opinion and uh, there would be one or two hearings, but mostly it is for submission of the written uh, responses or counter arguments. Uh, but recently uh, it's all about online. Uh, there are online hearings that's happening, especially the DIFC court. Uh, but Un unless it is really urgent, things have been stalled, uh, the hearings have been stalled, the decisions have been stalled. So we are waiting for measures from the judiciary to actually see whether the IP related matters would be taken online. Uh, and we are pressing for the same because as it is, as I said, uh, you don't do a lot of uh, oral arguments. It's all about writing. So uh, we submitted and the and the judge, if he's convinced, uh, goes with the submission or hires an expert for their opinion. Customs recorders and uh, trainings for the officials and all is going on, except for the training part. Uh, customs recorder and everything is going as smoothly as, uh, as previously. Uh, we do uh, training for customs official, which has uh, stalled uh, for at least uh, last three to four months. Uh, the lawsuits can be filed for the Code of First Instance, Code of Appeal, Code of Cassation. Uh, as I said before, uh, courts have the right to appoint experts. Damages are calculated at actual uh, uh, by these courts. Uh, but as it is in the present situation, uh, things have stalled. Uh, all the hearings and everything except for criminal cases. Now, I'm going to stop on that IP filings and prosecutions and everything. I just wanted to touch base on that uh, so that it could be a base for further slides. But if you need anything further or you want to know more about this part of the world and how things are functioning, uh, there's a paper that I've written. Uh, although it is uh, four years old, the, the basic content is the same. So if you want to look at it, the official cause, the professional cause, what are the strategies that you could use? So feel free to uh, look at that if you want to know more about it. Now, my second last session would be the current practices during COVID-19. Um, I said, what were the measures that were already taken uh, when the COVID started? Uh, all those measures are still in place, like the mask and the thermometer checking for every entity, uh, the social distancing, all the public transports and everything you need to maintain that safe distance. Uh, what are the current practice that's happening? Now, you must have heard about the Expo 2020, which was uh, 
a huge event that was supposed to happen uh, in uh, October this year. But early on during the, the COVID-19 situation and as it was going out of uh, control, uh, the government officials themselves said that it would be extended, I mean, it would be preponed, uh, postponed to uh, next year. So that would be October 1st, 2021. Uh, that's one of the major events that got postponed. Uh, other small events, conferences, and everything got postponed. Everything now gets, there was a huge event called uh, Auto Mechanica. There was beauty conferences, dental conferences. So this was a season of all these conferences. September again, the next season starts. Uh, everything has been postponed or either online uh, platform have been uh, taken. Uh, as I said before, there is no official notification uh, that an extension to deadlines will be provided due to COVID-19. And this is applicable for right from filing of an application, right from uh, submitting uh, outstanding documents, including the legalization. Uh, that's one of the issues that we are raising as an IP uh, profession. Uh, in fact, through AIPPI, we have submitted requests to the ministries and everything uh, to allow and to have an affirmative uh, decision uh, whether an extension is possible or not. Uh, the neighboring country, Oman, have given an affirmative decision of this sort, where even if you miss the deadline, including the filing, and if it's related to COVID-19, they would still accept uh, the application, uh, be it for patent or be it for trademark for that matter. Uh, but we do not have such kind of uh, notice uh, from UAE, Saudi, or any other jurisdiction. But what we do currently is we do the filing as it is, but if it, when it comes to outstanding documents, legalization, and those kind of requirements or response to office action, uh, as I said before, we submit a memo. Uh, if it's a non-legalized document, we submit a simply signed uh, power of attorney or any other document like deed of assignment and make sure that it is in writing that this is where, this is so much that the applicant could do and the applicant would require more time to complete the legalization procedure. So that's the strategy that we take and we are hopeful that they will accept it. Uh, Applicant, uh, as I said before, now the third point, applicants are faced with the notarization and uh, legalization issue. Um, all the consulates here in UAE are open. Uh, when I say all, like most of it, uh, I'm not sure about um, uh, the other consulates, but the UAE, con uh, the, the, the UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, uh, Taiwan or South Korea, those consulates are open. But what the applicants are facing is in their country, because these documents needs to be legalized from their, uh, where the document is originating. This is where we are facing issues where applicant would come back to us and say that uh, the council is there are closed and we can't do anything. Um, we are losing time. So that is a dilemma that we are facing currently on what to exactly tell our clients whether it would be possible an extension is possible or not uh, because we don't have a clear guidance uh, in dubai and abu dhabi the notary courts are accepting online applications so you just have a a, a call um, we fix an appointment and they would come online they would uh, verify the details along with the the emirates id the national id and they execute and notarize the documents, be it power of attorney or other deed of assignment or anything. They uh, accept it online and they notarize it online. As I said before, litigations, uh, some of the hearings have been suspended. Uh, some continue as usual, uh, like the criminal cases and all, it is being continued, uh, continued as usual. Uh, what we have seen in the last three to four uh, months is during the lockdown. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of it. I've told you about the innovation part of it, but we are typically like incoming filers. So when it comes to outgoing work, uh, when it comes to patents, trademarks, we have a lot of outgoing work. But when it comes to patents, we do not have a lot of local innovation. Uh, 
like in India or US or other developed, uh, developed and developing countries. So the sole reason being innovation is still in its early stage and people are merely thinking about innovation or, or these are the situations that we need to tackle. So over the last three to four months, what we have seen is a lot of local interest is happening for COVID-related uh, inventions uh, or something that could uh, design a mask that they have uh, developed. Uh, the, I'm talking about uh, SMEs and uh, local innovators. Uh, those kind of innovations uh, we have seen a lot. A couple of them, obviously, uh, I just want to show what uh, is Corona virus, these uh, between the Emirates. Now, UAE is seven Emirates. So between the Emirates, they have a checkpoint uh, system, especially between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So anyone that needs to enter the Abu Dhabi border needs to actually test negative for Corona in order to enter the border of uh, Abu Dhabi. So previously they were using the uh, usual PCR test and everything. It took a lot of time and there was a long queue for that. Now a local based, Abu Dhabi based uh, company have found to test uh, COVID, whether a patient is pro to COVID or not. It's not a COVID test exactly. Uh, it would just test whether this particular person have the likelihood of getting COVID-19 or not. If that particular test is positive, then that patient is being taken to the PCR facility where the regular test uh, would happen. So that has been indigenously developed uh, by an Abu Dhabi based uh, company and it's being uh, done. In fact, my wife is uh, going regularly to Abu Dhabi after doing this kind of test. Uh, and even if anyone needs to enter to the boundary I mean, to Abu Dhabi, they need to complete these tests to move forward. So that's that's just one of the invention that uh, that I was talking. Uh, we have filed at least ten to fifteen of such kind of uh, inventions because it's not publicly available. Uh, they are still in that phases of development. I'm not able to disclose much of it, but. What I want to say is innovations are happening in spite of all these difficulties. Uh, people adapt, obviously. Um, uh, this particular session itself is uh, one of the best examples. We would have never done this uh, if it was not for COVID. And, and it's a series that most of the uh, people take it. Uh, so humans are meant to be adaptive and I'm sure we would get out of this uh, situation. So before I wind up, a uh, couple of consideration, if you're interested in filing in these two restrictions would be to plan ahead rather than doing it uh, a last minute filing. Reason is, as I said before, there's a lot of these minute details that you need to look into and the cost obviously for legalizations and those kind of things that you need to plan ahead uh, if you're interested in filing in these jurisdictions, be it for trademark, be it for patents or any IP domain for that matter. Fridays and Saturdays are official weekend holidays here. Uh, that's something that uh, you will have to keep in mind when it comes to deadlines and uh, email correspondence and everything. And no, your patent or IP attorney. Uh, the reason that I stress that particular point is, uh, unlike in India or US or other jurisdiction, the IP profession is not regulated, which means even if I do not have a technical background or even if I do not have an IP background, I can call myself as a patent attorney and file a patent uh, or trademark for that matter on your behalf. You as a client will not know about it unless there is an office action or um, a response to an office action or a hearing that you need to attend. That's when you will understand that or your agent on record do not know the, the technology that uh, he has filed. 
and we need to hire someone else to do that. So make sure that whoever you are dealing with uh, has the background of IP and is knowledgeable about uh, patent, trademark, or whatever domain that you're dealing with. So to conclude, uh, this uh, Sheikh Mohammed's uh, words during this period was a whole new world is waiting for us with uh, new tools and new priorities. Uh, and as a country, uh, they are focusing more on the medical, the food, and the economic security through new programs and projects. Uh, one of the new initiatives that they have taken during this uh, COVID-19 uh, period was uh, to strategize for food security. Uh, as a desert country, uh, all the exports were happening uh, from outside UAE. Uh, now they're trying to develop, now in the sense, I would say almost a year before itself, but during the COVID-19 uh, situation, they have enhanced that program. Uh, they are doing uh, hybrid uh, research facilities, uh, especially the dates and rice. Uh, you would not imagine there are paddy fields in the middle of desert. So they are investing a lot of these kind of technologies uh, rather than not accepting the situation, accept the situation and then try try to move forward and then uh, everyone have their own bits to do to overcome this. So my suggestion would be to not to get negative, but move forward with a positive attitude. And then uh, as a humanity, uh, as a human community, uh, we would definitely get this through. Well, that's it from my side. And uh, if you have any questions or uh, feel free to let me know right now or even after the, the presentation, uh, you could email me if there is anything uh, you want from my side or um, any queries that you want me to answer, feel free to let me know. So thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. Thank you, Mr. David Jokap uh, Koshi, for your enlightened information. So given a very good picture, clear picture of what's happening in UAG and neighboring countries about the patents and etc and the process that's going on innovations are being taken place mr ashok ramkumar do you want to talk anything ramkumar uh, before going to questions let us sum up and then go for questions please talk do you have anything to talk now? Uh, to me or to Ashok sir? Mm. Ashok sir, are you here? Sir, I can't. Uh, yes, he's there. Okay, Ram Kumar ji. Yeah. Anything you want to talk? Uh, I think uh, we can check with the questions that are uh, there. Okay, before going to questioning, uh, let me sum up the today's entire pro uh, program. Mm -hmm. Ashok Ram Kumar has given a picture of uh, what they are going to do in the next few days, and also is given the process that is being done in India. And also, Mr. Mr. Koshi has given the picture of the UAE and the neighboring countries and the law applicable about the patent examiners, etc. Here at present, the courses are closed and the virtual courses are working from March onwards, March ending onwards, or April first week. It is being continued till August end. In the beginning. The virtual course started only urgent and extraordinary, extraordinary urgent matters. And only call work or some kind of important thing, things were being taken. Now, course has started working upon regular business. They are hearing the finally, final uh, pleadings and also taking the evidences at lower course and many other things are being done. Now the case are being disposed of on during during the virtual court process 
Similarly, in IT, IP sector, whether it may be patent, GA, or trademarks, we have established pre application processes there digitally. That is, searching, a prior search, making the applications, filing the application, paying the amount, fees, etc. All pre application, filing application processes digitally from the day beginning, maybe from a few years. There is no problem for them because they are people are accustomed to the particular process. Second, uh, do the examination of what are the objections are being observed by the offices, these registries, communicating them same thing to the advocates or the applicants. This can be this is also being processed digitally now. What are the applications are the replies are being given online? They are examining and uh, uh, notice for the publication is being done. Publication again, we have the electronic version of the public uh, uh, journal where you can see all the examined or sanctioned and what is there in the part of it. Third, post examination process is going on now. That can be also heard through the intellectually property right digital platform. So, there is a need to improve further the digital way of dealing with the intellectual property right processes. At the second stage or third stage, there is oppositions, post examination oppositions or rectifications, amendments, etc., when they are being sanctioned. This process will take some time. If this pandemic continues further, they also come under the end of your digital processing part of it. We are sure. And coming to the government and e governance part, many governments have started their work through e, -E data or online data. If you see, Recently, the government of Telangana has come with a special application called e-government or e-office application. This e-application is most useful for the day-to-day -day operation of the government and also for the public. We have the already MeSeva, e-seva, etc. for providing different kinds of structures. And also you can get all the many records through this one. Similarly, there will be a shop within no time the improvement in online applications part of improvement online processing of the intellectual properties take place maybe within six months or one year to suit or to meet the demands of the people during this kind of pandemic uh, situations the ip offices may come with a new uh, new structures or new process let us wait and we will go for these things coming to this process innovations are not stopping anywhere maybe innovations might have slowed down not stop new inventions are coming because of the pandemic to meet the vaccines or drugs or any other material part of it new software is being developed to meet the demand of online platforms many things are coming up now online platform teaching online platform from discussions online platforms, seminars like that many platforms are coming on electronic mode so a lot of improvement is going on online all these methods make for the approval, make we will be a part of audit, filing of the intellectual property rights. Any business method which is being used online is eligible for the particular patent under US laws, may not be in Indian law on Indian law process. So there is an opportunity. Whatever threats we are facing today under this pandemic situation, people are converting into opportunities, new things are coming up in the particular. Converting breakdowns into the opportunities breakthroughs is the most important need of the day it may be a ip it may be any other areas or arenas of the law or administration of governance so this will be the day we are looking to have some more webinars on this aspect from different countries i express my sincere thanks to mr kosi and mr ashok ram kumar for the better sparing of time for this particular part i Thank Karma and thanks to all the organizers who has took a lot of time, a lot of efforts and energies in stop in organizing this particular webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Nevin, we have a couple of questions on the forum. I would like to you if you can answer the questions which are posted by our attendees and participants. So the sure. first question, which is uh, multiple times repeated, is that what should an intellectual property owner's enforcement strategy be 
for the crisis in this critical situation for protecting their innovation yeah so uh, we have faced it i mean not only this uh, been answering that kind of a question from even from our set of clients now going directly and enforcing and raiding and those kind of things would be very difficult at this point of time so what we usually do is we this is a time where we collect evidences especially at least in this side of the world economy have started running um shops are open uh, production have started um collecting evidences is not uh, difficult so this is a time where we collect evidences we send cease and desist letter we keep the other party on notice try to negotiate and get this thing done because no one wants at this point of time to go to the court and have a lengthy process so we usually have that strategy uh, in fact we have closed a couple of like three or four we have already closed even before uh, going to the court by sense sending cease and desist letters uh, and then negotiating with the other party to uh, get done with it so these are the things that you can do it uh, customs record uh, is something that we strongly encourage uh, build your base know who is your infringer uh, and study them in such a way that either you can put them on notice or take them directly to the court and that purely depends on the other side thank you sir our next question is also in furtherance to the same question that what measures should be taken to enforce ip infringement matters that come to the company's attention during this pandemic since employees are working remotely and may have very limited resources and capabilities during this pandemic situation so yeah so i think i've answered that question in the first right. part also uh, it's mainly to do with understanding where the infringer is uh, understanding and collecting evidences regarding the infringement make sure that the, the other party is in notice and send the cease and desist letter because the courts here obviously would uh, value that whether you have taken uh, a proactive step to negotiate with the other party to settle uh, or did you put the the other part is on notice because many times the infringers especially when it comes to patents they would say that oh i didn't know that such a technology was patented uh, i thought it was a freely available one but though innocent infringement is not a defense it could affect uh, the damages uh, uh, so make sure that you put the other party on notice as soon as possible and collect the evidences thank you sir our next question is there that is there any immediate help provided in this pandemic or all the proceedings are plainly suspended or if there if the proceedings are suspended then what are the risk recourse which the applicant have in those particular situations yeah uh, the proceedings are not suspended it is continuing as usual uh, the oppositions and everything obviously uh, they haven't set any hearings so we have submitted the opposition it is still up to the trademark office uh, to actually uh, schedule a hearing uh, with other government offices like the free public and everything going online these days uh, we are quite confident that even the trademark office would go in that route uh, and unlike in other jurisdiction uh, for court cases and everything as i said before because there isn't much of oral hearings or arguments uh things can still go online uh you can uh, still proceed by by submitting written uh, responses uh, affidavits expert opinions and those kind of things uh meetings these days even my individual meetings are done uh, through online uh because we try to avoid direct uh, uh meetings with any uh, people for that matter the only uh dilemma that of one of the main dilemma during especially for the prosecution part is submission of uh, legalized documents and uh, uh, what if the applicant missed a deadline a filing deadline uh, 
that would create an issue. So we do not have a, a, a clear cut answer because we do not have a clear cut response from the officials. So we are still working on that. But as I said during the presentation, we submit along with the memo, uh, citing the reason for the delay. Thank you, sir. Our next question is that we know that patent is subject to jurisdiction, but due to pandemic, if in case an applicant was not able to file application in other jurisdictions, so in those particular situations, is there any extension extension provided to him or any another recourse is available to him owing to the present pandemic situation? Yeah, so as I said, uh, there is no clear cut notification on that. Uh, the only hope is the officials would accept our memo requesting for the extension if a deadline has been missed. Uh, this is a situation for UAE, but Oman uh, have clear, uh, given a clear notification saying that if a deadline has been missed, uh, the applicant can file citing the reason for COVID-19 and they will accept it in fact claiming the priority also i mean giving the right of the priority date uh, but rest of the jurisdiction there are uncertainties uh, what i would advise people who have interest in this jurisdiction is forget about everything at least file it along with the memo if you have missed the deadline so that at least we give a uh, a chance for the officials to look at it uh, and then decide on it once they have a clear cut guidance. Uh, a further extension of this question is to Ashok, sir, that whether any such kind of extension is provided in India, sir, to the applicants owing to the delay due to pandemic? Already told you. All limitations have been extended, whether condonable, non-condonable, or special act, you know, everything has been extended. So, you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, any uh, uh, missing of the bus can now be safely uh, recent, even a bit late. In fact, uh, certain evidences under Trademarks Act, even after expiry of uh, one month, I sent it to the other side. And then I had to scan everything and send it to him and say, look, though I'm entitled to send you, uh, though I'm uh, duty bound to send you physical documents, but because of this present situation, I'm sending you the uh, digitized documents. And after the uh, situation eases, I will definitely send you the entire set of uh, hard copies. So, so far as limitations are concerned, People can take it that they are in safe zone. In that, all limitations are automatically extended. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sure, Mr. Nick. Yeah, just wanted to ask a question to you, sir. Do you think uh, clients are taking, I mean, people who are actually not uh, affected by COVID 19, are they taking the advantage of this? Because uh, we have clients who are taking unnecessary advantage of it and trying to get into the cover of COVID-19 situation. Have you faced any such situations? Oh, yeah. uh, the, see, it is not, uh, the, these limitations or these sort of rules are not limited to people who got affected by it. It is a general law, it is a general extension for everyone. Okay. I think I think if, if, if this is done only for people who are affected with the pandemic or who are in the you know zones and all that, then I think again the certain provisions of article uh, under the constitution with regard to inequality and all those things will get you know uh, uh, you know they'll start raising. It. So the Supreme Court said it's better that you. You know, as a blanket order, you give to given the advantage. Thank you, sir. The next question is a kind of generic question to Mr. Nevin. Uh, we have a couple of law students who are attending the webinar, even at Ikpai Law School, Hyderabad. I'm very proud to share that we have students from different countries like USA, UAE. So once such student is asking, 
what are the steps a student should take or learn while they are studying law in India in order to make a career in UAE as IP attorney? Okay. While you're while you're doing the studies, what I would highly recommend, especially for the students, would be make sure that you have a ground reality of the Indian jurisdictions and law and the practice in India at least for two to three years. Uh, because if you are practicing here, the entire because as I said before, there is no oral hearings, there is no oral arguments. Uh, law here is very much, uh, there's no precedence to, like, if a case has been done, there is no precedent that, oh, you can cite that case uh, for your next uh, uh, case matter, court matter. So make sure that you have sufficient experience in India, uh, if, you are in, uh, if you are in India, obviously, uh, and then try to, because unlike in India, there isn't much of IP openings or job uh, vacancies, things are propping up. By the time you pass out, the situations might be different. But things are developing. And during that period, I would say to get sufficient experience in your own jurisdiction, uh, try getting experience in-house or law firms, it doesn't matter. And then you could articulate that idea and experience in UAE. So, have that in mind and then obviously uh, if i'm still around if you have any queries feel free to get connected i'm available in linkedin as well as in other platforms so i can guide you further specifically thank you sir with this we are over with the question and answer round now i would like to uh, request uh, Ashok sir, if he wants to make any another comment, else uh, would we would like to end the session with the vote of thanks. Um, one minute. Uh, sure, sir. I would also like to mention that uh, the verdict is doing uh, essay writing competition, a uh, second essay writing competition for students uh, around India. The first essay writing competition was highly successful. We have declared a lot of uh, prizes uh, uh, there. You can uh, check on the verdict side. And the second thing is we are conducting a certification course in trademark filing, you know, the entire law with about 90 topics and uh, uh, nine chapters dealing with every aspect of trademarks. So that is also on the Facebook and uh, people who want it can go to, uh, you know, uh, can uh, check on the um, you know, the web webinar, the web group that has been created by... Details are there in the chat box also, sir. Yeah, it is there in the chat box also, I am told. So you can uh, take a look at it. So this, this course is specifically designed in order to see that a person who does this course is actually equipped to file a trademark application subsequent to finishing this course. It is going to be that, you know, it is going to be so very practical for the person to understand and do it. So this is being done. We are going to do it in patterns, in trademarks. I mean, trademarks we are doing, patterns, designs, and copyrights are also will be done in future. So no more to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So now I would like to end the session with a vote of thanks. So thank you, everyone. It is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks for this wonderful event. I, Dilip Sharma, on behalf of Ikhmai Law School, Hyderabad, would like to propose a vote of thanks to our guests for this webinar in collaboration with Verdict IP and Innova. I would like to thank our guest of the day, Mr. Nivin Jacob Koshi, who is a partner in United Trademark and Patent Services, Dubai. I, we are also happy to have Mr. Ashok Kumar, Ashok Ram Kumar sir, who is the founder and senior IPR attorney at Verdict IP Hyderabad. We are also proud to have along with us our director, sir, Professor A V N Narsima Rao, sir, director Ikfai Law School, Hyderabad. I would like to thank all the panelists for sharing their wonderful insight on this topic of contemporary importance in this unprecedented time of pandemic. It was indeed a great enlightening experience listening to the learned panelists like you, sir. 
also i would like to thank mr sujit mr sujit who were there supporting me for the entire duration in the successful management of this uh, webinar and at last but not the least i would like to thank all the panelists and students for your presence patience active listening and wonderful questions thank you everyone thank you sir thank you thank you navin thank you narsimha rao sir